Joseph Müller, I work at Meteor Swiss um, on translating part of the uh, ICON uh, weather and climate model into, or weather and climate code, uh, into a DSL. Um, and yeah, this is a practical session uh, about the dusk and dawn DSL that uh, uh, Matthias introduced um, about an hour ago. Um, and we will look into how like to how to work on how to work with it in a practical on a practical side and do some simple exercises all right um so first i will give a brief introduction into the tool chain and some real world challenges that you will encounter when you when you work with it and then we will see some examples a pointwise examples where we will not interact with our nearest neighbors um in the mesh or grid and then we will see some simple reductions where we will get information from our nearest neighbors and do some computations so you've seen all the this picture already uh, during matthias presentation and it's just an overview over the tool chain and what i wanted to go he in here is the real life experience when you code and the real life experience is that any of these stages can throw errors so you have the front end, and you also saw, the, uh, saw that the front end converts to this SIR representation, uh, which is then read by the, the Dawn opt, uh, compiled to IIR, and then read by the Dawn code gen, and then either compiled in, let's say, uh, C++ or um, CUDA. And I put um, uh, Lightning here anywhere where you can all of these stages can throw errors, right? So it might even be that you generate bad code with the code gen and then the, the NVCC uh, CUDA compiler throws you an error because you, it's not valid CUDA code. Um, it would be good <laughs> to the domain scientist, let's say, if you are a, a climate scientist, that the front end gives you errors because the further down you are in this tool chain, the more cryptic to a domain scientist will be the errors. If the CUDA compiler throws you an error about block sizes, etc., the domain scientist will not know what's going on. But the problem is that the reality of development, like if you spend 10, 20 years developing such a tool chain, um, you will have the different stages interacting with each other and there will be bugs and you want all of these stages to do good error reporting so that you have a good debugging experience while developing. Right, so just this as a warning because you will encounter this. And I actually have a little demonstration for that already. Um, and this is not where we want to be. So this is the, uh, you will see this later, but this is our interface. We have um, on the server, we, we, we have a um, Jupyter notebook running and you will see all of these folders and these are different exercises. And we will go into the intro folder now and look at this uh, Dusk Dawn intro notebook. And I will just quickly give you an overview over JupyterLab and the file explorer, etc. I will not go through this. And then you have these small snippets of Python code that you can execute by clicking into them and then pressing Shift Enter, basically. So I can execute all of these and you will see some very simple Python code examples. You should know all of this. Um, one thing I want to mention, because you will see this all over the place, is that the in the Jupyter cells you can also execute uh, shell commands by uh, leading with uh, an exclamation mark. And for example, here we want to uh, print the GCC version and Clang format version, and if we do this, we will get um, GCC version 9.3 and Clang format 10. So just uh, because we will use the shell a lot to compile stuff, you will see this exclamation mark notation all over the place. And now we already come to Dusk Dawn. I will actually zoom in a bit because uh, video sharing, awesome. Now we come to Dusk and Dawn and you already see, uh, saw some Dusk examples in Matthias's presentation. And this is the, again, a very, very simple uh, example. Uh, we have we need to import Dusk script, and then we can define our stencils. And they're just Python functions in the end uh, with uh, stencil annotation here. And then we can 
already use our let's say types right because we we, we want to have a typed dsl not a, a statically yeah statically as possible type dsl let's say right um and what we have here is just a field of edges and we assign to every um location in the field we assign the one very simple example and now we uh, can see how we transpile this to um, SIR. And you will see that Dusk gets transpiled to a Py, Python AST, and that Python AST that gets, gets then transpiled to um, SIR. And that just looks like this. And if we then print this SIR file, we get the thing that you saw in Matthias's presentation. Slightly different SIR file because I believe you had a different example, but this is about what it looks like. And then um, we can do the SIR to JSON step just to have a um, a file, and this uh, file can then be, be be read by Dawn. And actually, it's right over here, right? So it's you will see this stuff in the file explorer every step that you do. And then you can go down the chain. So Dawn opt uh, processes this, passes it down to Dawn code gen, passes it down to the, um, uh, uh, generates a CPP file in this case. And this is exactly what we saw in the, in the slide where I gave you the overview, right? So we are currently here. We generated a CPP file. And now with GCC, we want to compile this to a binary. And that is... Um, uh, what will happen next? But first, we will look at this CPP file and use Clang format on it so that it looks nice. And then you will see that we generated some C++ code with our uh, DSL compiler. It looks something like this. Um, this is actually fairly readable as a generated code, even though it might look scary to you at the moment. Good. And then we can make this. And this is just calling this make file here, which we'll just call a C++ compiler. So all very standard. And then we run it. And we have just have a little checker here that the this field is actually one everywhere like we defined it, right? You remember we defined this dust kernel. A should be one everywhere. And we just check if it's true. And the output is that it's actually one everywhere. OK. So just about the errors that I presented, Again, every stage can throw an error. Um, we will look at some of them. So this is an error just in the Python syntax. So this doesn't even involve Dusk. This is just Python. If you define something with a missing closing bracket here, right? there is a closing bracket missing, then the, the Python will already complain. This doesn't have anything to do with the DSL yet. So if I close this bracket, it will be fine. And then we have Dusk errors. And Dusk errors, um, excuse me, uh, are very long error messages, as you will see down here. So what happened here is we have an undefined variable, and Dusk will catch us this. Um, and again, this is in the Python error. Do it do its dynamic nature, but in Dusk it's an error because it's statically checked. And if I generate this error here again, you will see that Dusk has very very long error messages. And the juicy part uh, is usually at the bottom. So you scroll all the way down if you will encounter this later when you do the exercises. And then you will see Dusk syntax error, undeclared variable, undefined variable. So it's actually fairly readable and um, yeah, should help you quickly to get rid of your problem. Now let's see some Dawn errors. So Dawn error again can in, come in Dawn opt and Dawn code gen. And I will define a stencil here. And the stencil will have the error that we assign an edge field to a cell field. Uh, this is a type mismatch, so um, shouldn't be valid. And you could argue that the front end dusk should already catch this, but in in our case, it gets catched. It's get it gets caught in dawn. Um, in the first uh, in the dawn opt, it will get caught. Now, if I execute this, we will get a dimension consistency check failure. And you will also see this often, usually when we do these exercises with students. Uh, this is a very common error because people 
uh, don't match the dimensions of the fields and you will then get this dimension consistency error. So remember that for later. Right, and then we can just get C++ errors if we generate bad code. Um, and in this case, uh, uh, what happened is that this parameter that we introduced here, this B parameter, um, isn't there in the driver code, right? So Dawn generates a uh, interface, and then our driver, uh, CPP here, which we hand write, relies on this interface. And if there is a mismatch, of course, the C++ compiler throws an error. So that's what we get here. Um, yeah, so there is some other details here, but we shouldn't spend too much time on this. I think the most important errors you saw, and you will know how to deal with them when you uh, do the exercises. All right, let's go back to the presentation. Already prepare the next uh, notebook so that I can switch quickly. Right, so next we will do some simple um, examples. And these simple examples will be about pointwise stencils. So a very simple pointwise stencil is here where we have an input field that is defined on cells. So these red dots are, should represent that for every cell we have exactly one value. And the output field is also on cells and we do not interact with our neighbors. We don't do, we just do local computations. And what we do is we assign the output field is equal to input field plus one. And so every one of these uh, numbers gets increased by one. Very easy, no neighborhood accesses, no reductions. And well, what, you, what we can do with this is just, uh, for example, image processing. So this will be our example so that we have a nice visual feedback loop. We will do some image processing uh, with Mona Lisa. Unfortunately, not this time. And I think we have a different sample image, but um, we will have to deal with that. So this is the next quick example. And what I will do, I will solve some of these. You will always have the solutions here. So there is an exercise file and a solution file with all of the co correct solutions filled in. And of course, there's lots of text that I will not go through that describes what to do in the exercises and explains the theory. For example, here are some formulas explained. And I will just quickly show two examples here and the rest is for the exercises. So the first example will be a field that assigns A plus B to C. So we have an output field C, an input field A and B, and we want to assign them pointwise for every location. And this is very easy, it's just A plus B, right? So, and we always uh, are able to check this. So for all of these notebooks, we have somewhere um, checker functions that, that will give you feedback if you did the right thing. And here, if I compile all of this and run it, etc., then I will see that I did the correct thing. And now we will look at some Uh, simple sense successful um, and here is the verifier and it will see that actually C is equal to A plus B. So I will skip this exercise about the norm. Oh, I don't want to shift. Okay. I will skip this exercise about the norm. It's a good point-wise exercise to do when you later start with the exercises. And I will uh, jump straight to the exercises about the colored black and black and white image. So we'll just uh, load an image here, uh, doesn't concern us. And the exercise is to convert this image, down here we see it, the original image on the right, to this black and white reference image. And we will see here's our current computed image, which is completely wrong. So the left image is what you compute, and you can compare visually if it's correct, and it's wrong right now. And the formula for this conversion from color to black and white is we have three color channels, R, G, and B, and we should divide each one of them by three. Uh, sorry, we should add them the values together, divide the result by three, and then assign this to R, G, and B. This is the formula. 
And let's define a incorrect dusk stencil. So R plus G plus B, we saw, right? Divided by three. And let's um, naively assume that we want to do the same thing for the other two. Whoops, this is not the correct. Uh, for the other two um, channels. So if I do this, will I get the correct result? And this is wrong because we already change R here. So this R that we input in the second line will be will be incorrect, right? So let's let's see what happens here. Um, and then I will show the right solution. So this is just about like defining temporaries and and uh, so yeah, as we see, this is incorrect. And and one way to do this correctly is of course just to because R G and P are the same value C, you can just do R again and R again, and then you're fine. We also have some temporary fields here, by the way, if you if you want to do this with a temp one, right, like, like this. Um, let's, let's use a temporary, but it's not necessary. So this file work, this works also. Right. And let's see. And this will be correct. Good. Right. So there is um, the exercise with the norms. And below is uh, longer exercises again with uh, also more image um, computations. I would at least recommend you to do one of the pointwise exercises. Um, but we will jump ahead now to the exercises that involve neighborhood reductions. So, um, differential operators. So we will look at the gradient, the curl, and the divergence. Um, I will just present quickly how these are calculated on a triangle grid like this. Um, because we are on um, uh, basically octahedral grid, uh, uh, sorry, um, not octahedral, uh, what is it called? Hexa hexagon grid. Um, aside that we have icosahedral, so we have pentagons occasionally, but for now we rely on that we have always six neighbors. If you, for example, like here are a uh, vertex, you always have six triangles around you that we will assume. And um, I will explain these operators for these grids. So here we want the gradient, and we want it for on a cell, and what we have given is uh, values for the edges around our cell. And what we need is the field on the edges that we want to take the gradient of, the length of the edge, the normal vector for the edge, and then the area of the cell. And with this, we can calculate this gradient with this formula. So just sum over uh, function times length times uh, vector, and then divide over one to three, right, all three edges, and then divide by the area of the cell. And that should give you a gradient. All uh, right, a note on the geometrical factors. The problem with the normal vectors is that we always want to only save them once, but they're differently oriented. If I do this gradient computation in the blue cell, the vector needs to be oriented this way. And if I do it in a red cell, it needs to be oriented the opposite way. To save space, to make this efficient, we have um, something what's called an edge orientation. Excuse me. Um, and the edge orientation says, so we have all of these normal vectors in some array saved. And the edge orientation tells us for every cell which way the normal vector should be oriented. So it's just a plus one or a minus one. That's it. And we will need this edge orientation to, to write the correct code. Yeah, I explained this, sorry. So the edge orientation for this uh, uh, for the cell A is 1, 1, 1, right? And for the cell B, it's minus 1, 1, 1, because we need to turn around this, uh, this normal vector. Good. So let's have a look at the divergence next. It's again uh, a value that we want to have for our cell. 
and we use the three edges around it to compute it. And what we need is a vector field on the edges, this V, and then the norm of the edge, and again, the length of the edge. And of course, again, the area of our cell. And so we do then the scalar product or the dot product between these two vectors, and then multiply that by the length, sum up, and then divide by the area. Uh, you will have all of these slides, by the way, on the website for when you do the exercises. So you don't need to worry about not having, like remembering this. You will have the material. Good. And then I will quickly introduce the curl. And this is the um, most complicated one of the three, at least for me. And uh, what we have here is that we want the curl on a vertex location. And we have the uh, fields, or we have we have everything given on the six edges around us. And we, what we have given again is the normal vectors, the vector field on the edge. Then this is a dual length. This is not the length of the edge, but the dual length of the edge. If you would were to construct the Voronoi cell. So the Voronoi cell for this is constructed by, well, it's it's this gray cell here, and you construct it by um, uh, taking in the middle of this edge always the uh, orthogonal edge, and then combining these six orthogonal edges, and you get the Voronoi cell, and the length of one of these edges is the dual length. So this is the length that you need. Don't worry, it will just be given to us in our coding interface. And then we also need the dual area, and that is the area of this Voronoi cell, so the gray area. And what we do again is we do a scalar multiplication, or dot product, and then do um, the multiply it by the dual length and divide it by the dual area. And then we have our curl. Right. Of course, here we sum from one to six, because we have six edges. So doing these three, Operators will be the second part of your exercise, and that will introduce you to simple neighborhood reductions. Um, just to give you an overview, so you don't will not be you don't need to code any of this. Just what happens in the background, the functions where you will take the gradient from, for example, will do be the sine multiplied by cosine, and you will compute this in the end, and then divergence and curl. These are the input fields, and you will get. Like the, the the analytical formula is this, and of course, because we do computational, uh, uh, we do numerics, we will compare to the analytical output, and then we will see some some sort of error, right? Good, and then this will be for later all of the variables, uh, names, etc. So we will get all of this material. What I would like to do now is to just go back to the uh, divergence and calculate that for you. Uh, just as a first example, and then you can do the gradient and the curl. All right, let's hope my Jupyter Lab still works. Good. So these are all in differential ops, in the differential ops folder. And I would strongly recommend you to navigate here in this folder structure because if you press the back button in the browser, you will actually close the whole environment. And then we will go to the differential ops exercises. And then we have our dusk here. And we already see that we have the fields that we saw right now. So U is the X um, component of the vector field. V is the uh, Y component. And X and then Y are the X and the Y component of the norm, normal vector. Sorry, not, not norm, normal vector. L is the length of the edges. A is the area of the cells. And you can see right here, type system, right? So. A, the area of cells, is defined on cells. L, the length of the edges, is defined on edges. So we have our types. And then we have this edge orientation. And this is one of these sparse fields, right? For every cell, we want to know how the edges around us are oriented. So uh, we actually saw this here. This is probably the most, the best example. For every cell, for the cell A, we want to know how the three edges around us need to be oriented. So for every cell, we need a field on three edges around us. And this is exactly this edge orientation. For every cell, we have a field around us um, 
for every edge that, that, that explains how it should be oriented. And now I will use all of these variables to calculate the formula. And we go quickly back to the slide and check what the formula looks like. And it's the divergence. And first we do a uh, dot product between the vector field and the norm. So this should be something like um, u times nx plus v times ny, right? And then we multiply that by the length. But then we notice that this should be summed over. So we need to do a neighborhood reduction. And this is, as you saw in Matthias' presentation, the sum over. And we do a neighborhood uh, reduction from cell, where we want our result, to edge, where we want to get the data from. And then closing bracket. And I think we forgot to divide by the area of the cell. So this is divided by A. That should be the correct formula. Let's test it. So again, we just have this Dusk stencil. We compile it all the way down to C++ code. And then we compile. And down here for the runner and the checker, you need to say what you want to run and what to check. So we want to here, here do the divergence instead of the gradient. So I will say runner divergence. And then um, checker divergence. Again, like always read the text so you know what's, what's going on. And we will see that um, I think I did, I made a mistake. And this is not the correct solution. So because I don't have a lot of time, let's, let's just quickly check what I did wrong. Oh yeah, the edge orientation is missing. Um, so we need to multiply also by the edge orientation here to make sure the edges are correctly oriented. And that should be correct. So here you will see the correct result in the solution. And then on the left will be your result. And then on the right will be the errors plotted. And you will see that the scale here and the errors are like one or two magnitudes usually smaller than, than um, the actual results. All right, so this completes my small tutorial. Um, and I think now we go over to exercises. The question is, how do we organize? Because I believe um, some people want to do the cyclone exercises and some people want to do the dusk and dawn exercises. So we should split in two rooms. Yes, uh, I believe that's what needs to happen as well. Also, are there? do we have time for questions? Maybe I can answer one or two questions. Uh, before we split. I believe you, we, I started like five, six, seven minutes late, right? Quite possibly. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if something happens in chat. Otherwise, um, we need to organize the splitting into rooms. I saw, are we going to create uh, like breakout rooms? So I mean, each, uh, everybody's free to join. Um, uh, whatever breakout room uh, they're interested in. I mean, it's also possible that one group stays in this room just to minimize the amount of moving, and then one group moves to one breakout room. OK, Seems that's fine. possible. Yeah. So I mean, either you or Andy decide uh, where to stay. <laughs> I don't mind. I'm happy to move to a new room. OK. Yeah, I will wait. How to start a tutorial from VirtualBox. You won't need the VirtualBox for this. You will just, uh, so so if we're talking about Dusk and Dawn, you will just get a browser link from me, and it will be this link here. I was going to post this as after we split, but you will just go to this link. It's in the It's in the public chat. And then you can do your exercises. 
and for the cyclone exercises i'll show you how to start them within virgil box once we've split off yes so just to be clear actually for everybody now so we're going into the the hour long tutorial section now which is supposed to be self-guided for both i think dusk dawn and cyclone and will be available on um chat to answer questions so we have two breakout rooms now i saw yeah. exactly so i mean it's it's not possible to create one breakout room so okay <laughs> uh, uh, right so okay. so let's say andy students move to breakout room one okay and we stay here so the people who want to do the dusk and dawn exercises stay here okay exactly. good and to it's going to run for about 25 minutes so uh, we need it to run for about an hour, I think. Yeah, yeah, we need it to run for an hour. Okay, I mean, um, let me see if I can... So, by the way, the reason for the students to, that we create these breakout rooms is if Andy or me want to help you solve the exercise, we will need to screen share. And always jumping between Andy's screen share and my screen share is going to be quite bothersome. So, uh, this is why I want to split. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is what's going to happen. I mean, and it's once um, the break, the breakout room sessions end. I mean, we I will create another one because I think right now it's not possible to recreate it. It's running already. So um, you'll just Could we restart on. them. Sorry. Would we restart the breakout rooms? Yeah, we shall have to restart them. Um, no, I mean, can we oh, do it now? now? Give them a longer lifetime. Okay, let me see if that's possible. Um, So maybe while we wait, Andy and me can already make some announcements. So for, for, from my side, um, if you are on the website of the summer school, the slides <clears throat> from Matthias and my session should already be uploaded. And you will need the slides from my session, the gradient diversions that I just showed, to do the exercises. So just make sure everyone downloads the slides and has them already open. And aside from that, you will just need the link that I posted in the public chat. 